So, we are welcome our third speaker, Frederick. Um, any technical issues? So you basically have to wish here and do it. Okay, so let's welcome our third speaker, Frederick. So I'm talking about a problem which I uh, worked on for some time. Currently I'm working on something else, but I'm willing to continue research in this area soon. Um, so it's a job scheduling problem, and here you're given a bunch of jobs and you're supposed to schedule them. Um, the interesting thing here is that you're also given one processor, and this processor is speed adjuster. That means you can set it to any speed from zero to infinity and schedule your jobs on it. Um, this power function, which describes the relationship between one, uh, the speed you set and the cost of the speed. And um, the interesting thing is that you have a trade-off. Um, we usually assume that the power function is convex and monotonically increasing, and therefore the faster you schedule a job, the more expensive it is. But on the other side, it's also earlier done, so you might be able to finish other jobs in the meantime while you're already done. And, yeah, I will continue with the motivation. Um, of course, saving energy is important. Um, server farms waste a lot of energy and um, they have huge costs. Eric Smith, a uh, former CEO of Google, said once, what matters most to the developers at Google is not um, speed, but Power, low power, because data centers can consume as much energy as a village, as a town. And <coughs> also a second aspect I'd like to mention is battery capacity. We all know that those are quite limited, and the more energy you waste, the earlier you run out of battery. Okay, I start with definitions, give an example, and then uh, I'd like to talk about two different objectives you might have in this context. and. If time permits it, we will extend it to multi-core processors. Okay, so in our setting, we are looking at an online algorithm. Um, that makes sense because if you are a data center, you don't know when your jobs are going to arrive, and you even don't know if jobs at all are going to arrive. So we don't have any knowledge about the future. We don't even know um, the workload a job has and things like that. I'll come to the definitions later, but basically you don't know anything about the future. Okay, and the way we, so we are analyzing our algorithm. We will give an upper bound for the algorithm. And uh, the way we do is we use computer <coughs> factor, which is essentially the same as approximation factor. Um, it just has a different name to emphasize that we are here in the online setting and not in the offline setting. Um, so what a competitive factor is, is basically the ratio, the gap between an optimal solution and a solution of our algorithm for a specific instance. And the competitive factor is now the worst case, the worst, the biggest gap, biggest ratio between um, our algorithm and the optimal algorithm. And here's a maximum for um, two terms, and that's because of minimization problems and maximization problems. We only want to consider um, yeah, factors of bigger than one. Okay, and now the definition of the problem. So. You're given n jobs, they will arrive over time, and all of those jobs have certain properties. One of the properties is the release time. Um, you don't know anything about the job before it's released. You also have a deadline, and um, this is a hard deadline. So you have to schedule, if you want to complete the job, you have to schedule it within its uh, release time and deadline. If you don't do it, you will get, yeah, you have to pay a certain amount, which I can do later. Um, a job comes with a workload, and that could be something like the number of instructions you have to um, run in your CPU or something like that. And as I said, in some models we also have a value. So um, if you are allowed to reject some jobs, if 
you allow to not finish some jobs, then um, the value is going to be charged. So it's kind of a loss of income. If you don't finish the job, you have to pay some money. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that we can set the speed of our processor and we can even vary the speed for one process. So you could start scheduling a job on a small, with a small speed and then you could increase it later. And uh, if you want to finish a job, the integral over the speed to schedule a job with has to be at least the workload. Um, in fact, it's sufficient if it's exactly the workload, but it's just easier to analyze that way. <coughs> okay, so first I start with the very basic model uh, which was introduced in uh, 1995 by Yao and this only considers one processor. And we have this power function with this S to the power of alpha. So right now people believe that for current computers the alpha is about 3. So it, it really makes sense. Um, and again, the power function gives you the relation between the speed you have and the power consumption. And we kind of assume that the power consumption equals the costs you have. So for one unit of power consumption, you pay one dollar. Okay, and the costs we have is the cost for scheduling the job, which is determined by the speed you schedule the job with, and also the loss of income. And the loss of income is what I have on the left side. So if J are the your, all your jobs together, and J prime are your finished jobs, then the left term here is the loss of income. And additionally, as I said, we sum up over all costs for scheduling jobs, even for those which we not finish. And that really can happen in the online setting. So it might happen that you're right now working on a job, and you want to, you're, yeah, you're planning on finishing it, but then a job with an even higher value comes, and you want to finish that, and it's not worth scheduling the old job until its end, because then the m money you would spend on scheduling it uh, is just more than the value. I have an example for that. Okay, so what we want is to minimize this. And also, so yeah, the main goal is obviously to create a schedule which assigns the speed at all times. I would start with an example. It's for the offline case, just to give you an intuition how, how you would do things. So in this particular example, jobs don't enter, um, so the release time and the deadline don't intersect. And on the x-axis, we have the time. So a job, those jobs, job two is released here and it ends here. And as you can see, only job three and job four intersect here. Um, and in this case, it's really easy to get a schedule. So what you do is you try to schedule a job with a constant speed. If you, if you schedule it with a non, not a constant speed, but two different speed levels, then you can easily prove that it's not optimal. So you can just lower the speed at some point, increase it at the other point, and have a lower um, power consumption. That's due to the complexity of the power function. And a special case for that is obviously that if you schedule a job for some time, in which means release time deadline, and then you just don't do anything in this period. So you could imagine that you schedule the job from here to here, and then you just relax here, and that doesn't make any sense. Okay, so you schedule for the concept speed that what it boils down to if you know what's going to happen in the future. And if you now look at J4, even if there was no joke J3, then you can calculate that the cost for scheduling this job would exceed the revenue, the value of the job. So it doesn't make sense to schedule the job at all, so that just discard it. And yeah. Okay. So that was an easy example. Um, in fact, there's an optimal offline algorithm also given by Yao when he opened research in this area. And it's polynomial and yeah, does everything but it's not online. And later, Chan et al. Um, gave an online algorithm. The idea is really nice. It's just every time a new job comes, you calculate from the scratch a new schedule and look at the speed you use to 
schedule this new job. And if it's too big, then what you do is you just stick to the old schedule. Otherwise, you switch and proceed with the other schedule. And the competitive factor is this here. Okay. By the way, if you don't allow rejection, so if you are forced to schedule all jobs, then your competitive factor is alpha to the power of alpha, and that's tight. Okay, I'm not going to go too much into depth here, but now I just want to give some ideas. Now you're looking in an, uh, at an online algorithm, and the problem here is that new jobs can arrive. So here you thought it would be nice to schedule the job with a constant speed, because as I said, that's optimal. And then suddenly J2 is released, and it forces you to schedule this job because the value of this job might be very high, which also means that the time you have left for scheduling J1 at the end is rather small, so you have to increase the speed here. So this is as a higher speed than this part here. And if this happens, a lot, then yeah, you're forced to invest a lot of energy on scheduling this job. And as a side note, it's interesting that you always have those um, stair from the current point of time, which is this here. Um, you always have a staircase function. What's going to happen in the future? Yeah, so it's so important. Okay, so there are two different models. The model I described so far this minimization might not be so intuitive. I would say later why we are considering it. Um, the more intuitive model is probably that what you get, your profit, is the number of jobs you finished, so the money you get from your customers, minus the cost you have for scheduling your jobs. And as a reminder, what we consider is you pay for every job you didn't finish. And you also have the cost of scheduling a job. Um, I showed for my bachelor thesis that um, in this even more in this more intuitive schedule that you are uh, doomed because there's no deterministic algorithm which has a constant um, competitive factor, so which is not dependent on the input size. Whereas for the other one, you have an alpha to the power of alpha approximation, or, or in the other model, alpha to the power of alpha plus two epsilon times alpha. But yeah, interestingly enough, um, you still have an optimal solution in one setting. It's also an optimal solution in the other setting. Um, but yeah, that happen, happens quite a lot, that even though the problem, the optimal solutions are the same, uh, the competitive factors vary quite a bit. OK. And that part of the models out there, a sleep state model, which we also consider. Um, there's no time for that. And a multi core processor. And here we allow preemption as much as we want. So you can stop a job, put it somewhere, and later continue <coughs> the job. You also allow job migration. Um, you have several processors, right? And um, you're allowed to migrate it from one processor to the other one instantaneously without paying anything for that. And yeah. But you have this restriction that you can't schedule one job on different machines at the same time. And yet, I also proved in my bachelor thesis that this is also alpha to the power of alpha competitive, which is quite surprising because that's the same competitive factor as for the single uh, machine. But even though now you have more processors, and yeah, you could think that it's harder to find a really good solution because the uh, optimal algorithm just has more possibilities. But yeah, it's the same. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah, I think I leave it to that. Okay. So uh, let's welcome our, um, let's thank our speaker. And obviously we can have more questions from the audience. Uh, anyone want to ask? Yeah, yes, Mohamed. Do you have any, for instance, experimentation to say how much you've been, uh, you have been, I mean, uh, better than the previous approaches? 
improve, I mean, your improvement? So it's, it's a no new model. There was no, no research done in the multi-core processor in that uh, with uh, your rejection. So I can't compare to anything. Um, but yeah, if I remember, remember correctly, the analysis is more, is more or less tight. So there are worst case instances. But the problem with competitive factor and approximation factor is that you always, that those factors are just determined by the worst case instance, which might be in fact really rare. So one, if for all instances except of one, your algorithm is performing well, and but this specific instance it's doing badly, then that's still your competitive factor. And another one now, is that P is equal to S to the power of three ways? I mean, yeah. in the previous papers. Yeah. So they that's for CMOS architecture or something like that. I'm uh, not really familiar with this area, but. Uh, you know, um, my team, I'm working with Professor Alexandra. She loves to make schedulers. So my question is regarding your uh, conclusion that we can increase what frequent processor frequency to speed up yeah. execution, right? But we can only increase to the certain limit. What if you can't increase high enough to provide enough uh, speed? Okay, so I presented two you models. Uh, in the one model, we said we have to schedule all of those jobs, and that's not possible. If you have a certain threshold, um, then you might exceed it at some point. Mm -hmm. So the only way to prevent that is by scheduling always at the maximum speed to make sure that you never lose a job which the optimal algorithm has uh, or schedules. But what? There's also some research. Yeah, I don't want to go too much into that, but uh, there's also some research done with a threshold because it's really more realistic. Um, okay. yeah, so what you basically do is you increase your speed the entire time by a bit to make sure that you have some, some slack given. Another like a comment that you said that the multi-core processors migrating a thread will link your low overheads. Well, I believe it's not the case. You yeah, it's not the case. You migrate in the thread, but you have to migrate some memory. True, yeah. And but it becomes negligible. That's true, but it com becomes negligible if your jobs are really large. Uh, I mean, the workload is really large at the time you are given, so the time in between the release time and the deadline is pretty really uh, huge. Then, yeah, you have a lot of time, and then that's not such a big thing. Because the schedules we produce don't migrate too often. Okay, so you're considering tasks that run for long periods of time? Yeah. Like servers? Yeah, right. Okay, so let's thank our speaker again. And, uh, our next speaker, a couple of minutes to prepare, I believe.